Before moving on to the next module, let's introduce some basic concepts. We all live in a real world. We all deal with numbers at some or the other point of time in our life. Now let's suppose you need to count, say for example, the amount you have. You'll require numbers. Let's suppose you need to count your age. We'll be dealing with the numbers. Now let's represent those numbers on an axis. So that numbers I'm going to represent on an axis like this. Let's say starting from zero, say for example, the time at which you have done the investment and the positive numbers on the right, three, four and so on. Now it's not only the positive numbers that are necessary. Let's suppose you have borrowed some amount of money from your friend. So that's the amount that got debited from him or a kind of amount that you have borrowed and has to be returned back to him. So that amount is actually a kind of debt that you have with your friend. In order to represent that, there was a need to represent such kind of events with respect to negative numbers. So we have this axis to be extended to the other side. So that axis is represented on the other side with all the negative numbers in place. So let's say this is minus one, minus two, minus three, and so on. So we have positive numbers on the right, we have negative numbers on the left. Now if we have these numbers, we can solve some basic equations. Say for example, let's say we have here x square plus one equals to zero. Let's try to solve this equation. Now if you try to solve this equation in order to find x, we find that there's something really uncertain. There's something very fictional we can say, very unusual. That is this square root of negative numbers. That's strange. Now if we try to plot this number, this number we have got some entity here that is root of minus one that is having no place on this axis. As we say that we all deal with the numbers in real life, we deal with the real numbers and these real numbers are represented on this axis with the positive numbers on the right and negative numbers on the left. But what about this number? The number that we have newly obtained that is root of negative numbers. What is that? This root of negative numbers is having no place on this axis. But if you have negative numbers, we have to deal with such instances. Now in order to represent this quantity, let's denote this quantity. And it was actually introduced way back in the 18th century by Euler this quantity was represented as j and it was named as an imaginary number. So j here is equals to root of minus one and that is called as an imaginary number. just because it has having no place on the real axis, we need to find some or the other representation in order to accommodate such numbers. In order to represent such numbers, we need to extend the axis to a whole new, new axis. Now I'm extending this axis onto a new 
let's say I'm drawing this a new axis vertical axis let this axis represent different points that are relevant to this number so I'm marking this axis with respect to this newly obtained number that is the imaginary number so let that be j 2j 3j and so on and on the other side we have this as minus j minus 2j and so on minus 3j and so on now that will actually facilitate us to represent or to actually plot such numbers where this root of negative numbers exist now we are comfortable to represent this new numbers now let's suppose you want to plot this number say j you can easily represent that number onto this axis so j here is here now let's carefully observe this representation this representation is having the numbers on a real line and yes there is also the numbers represented on the vertical axis and we are naming that axis as an imaginary axis or the axis that is holding this imaginary number that we have recently obtained we have a combo of real and imaginary so let's suppose in general if we have a number that is having both the negative part or the real part let's suppose we are having a number let's say x plus jy so that is having both the parts a real part as well as the imaginary part that we can represent on this axis here how can i represent that you can see that this number let me rub this point you can see that in general this number is having both the real part as well as the imaginary part and it says that this is having x units on the real axis and y units on the imaginary axis so let's take an example say for example if we need to represent a number like 2 plus 3j you can see that this is having the x or the real part as 2 so we need to have we need to move 2 units on the real axis and 3 units on the imaginary axis so that point lies somewhere here so you can see that this point is located two units two units from the zero point along this real axis and three units so I've marked it here see two units from the horizontal axis and three units along the vertical axis now this point here as we can see is located at 3 units that is 3j here and 2 units along the horizontal direction now the same point now let's name that point let this in general this point be say z that is x plus jy now this new point is actually represented as a combo of real and imaginary but that's not the only way to represent this point let's suppose if we draw a line right from the center point in order to reach the end point now if it try to draw this line segment you can see that this point here 
can be represented with respect to this line segment. Let's suppose this dot or the point that we have drawn it here is located at say R units from the zeroth point. And let's suppose this line is making an angle of say theta with respect to this horizontal axis. So we can represent the same point here with respect to the length or the distance of this point from the origin and with respect to the angle that it makes with respect to this horizontal axis. Now let's analyze this. We can see that this uh, the R here is nothing but this diagonal line segment and we can easily find that from the Pythagoras theorem because we already know what is this and what is that we can easily find this is R turns out to be equals to under root of x square plus y square whereas theta here is represented as tan inverse of y by x. You can do this basic math and you will find that this r is represented as under root of x square plus y square whereas theta is represented as tan inverse y by x. Now we have got two different representation of the same number that we say it as a complex number. So a complex number in general is a combo of real as well as imaginary number. Let's take that number again. So we are representing a complex number by say Z that is X plus JY and X here is uh, cos theta whereas Y is as uh, sin theta, you can see here from the basic maths you can find that this one here, the amount that it, the point is located from this origin along the real axis, this two here is actually R of cos theta. So we can do the maths that this one, this quantity is r times sine theta whereas this quantity here is uh, cos theta. This means that z can also be represented as uh, cos theta plus j times uh, sine theta. And it can be proved that this is equivalent to have as r e to the power j theta. And this relationship is called as the Euler's relationship or Euler's equation. Let me mark this. This one is called as Euler's equation. So Euler's equation actually relates the exponentials with the sinusoids and it's very easy to prove this relation. From the basic of Taylor series you can prove this equation. Let's look at the proof of this equation. So proof. In order to prove this Without loss of generality, let's consider the Taylor series representation of exponential function. So let e to the power j theta be represented with the help of Taylor series. So this is going to be 1 plus whatever the power is, that is j theta plus 
j theta square upon 2 factorial and so on j theta cube upon 3 factorial and so on now let me collect alternate terms so this is equivalent to have 1 plus j theta square upon 2 factorial plus j theta to the power 4 upon 4 factorial and so on so I am collecting alternate terms plus j times I am taking j common theta plus j theta cube upon 3 factorial plus j theta to the power 5 upon 5 factorial and so on and we can easily see that this term here is in fact a Taylor series representation of cos theta whereas this term here is actually representation of Taylor series of sin theta therefore we can say that this is equivalent to cos theta plus j times sin theta therefore we have proved this relation the Euler's equation Now this is what is called as a complex exponential and we shall see in the subsequent lectures that these complex exponentials are very very important and actually forms building blocks of representation of various signals and systems. So let me quickly revise what we have seen so far. We have seen that there is a need there is a need to represent numbers that are having the representation as a square root of negative numbers. So we were not satisfied with the representation of numbers on the real axis. Therefore we have extended this axis to a whole new dimension that is called as a negative square root that is the imaginary axis where the imaginary axis is having all those numbers which are having the square root of negative numbers. So we have introduced this new axis as the imaginary axis and we have tried to represent these numbers on this new axis. And later on we have discovered that the same number that is actually represented as a combo of real as well as the imagined number is called as a complex number. A complex number is a combo of real as well as imaginary and that can be plotted on this extended axis where the horizontal here represents the real axis whereas the vertical represents the imaginary axis. We have seen that the same point can be represented in a different way with respect to the r and theta that is the length of the segment line segment that is drawn between the origin and that point and with respect to the angle that it makes with respect to the real axis and we found a relationship between the representation of the complex numbers in two forms and we have arrived at the fact that there is a very tight representation or a very concise, very compact representation of the exponentials with respect to the sinusoids. So this equation that is Euler equation actually gives a very good relationship, very 
nice and compact relationship between the complex exponentials and the sinusoids. We shall see more into this in the next module. Thank you.